everybody. It's Corey here at More Guitars and More Music in Evansville, Indiana with another episode of Little Guy with the Big Guitar. All right. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about some of my favorite effects. I love modulation effects. I use them for lots of different purposes. One, to sound swirly and cool and sometimes icy, to fill up space when uh, a guitar player goes to take a solo and we're playing in a three-piece band, I like to kick on a, a little bit of modulation to make my bass sound just a little bit fatter. So what is modulation? Modulation is in a, a roundabout way the doubling of your signal and then modulating that sound wave either in tune detuned or uptuned at a specific speed and at a specific depth and then adding that back into your original signal. Uh, so this used to be accomplished using what they call bucket, braid, bucket brigade, easy for me to say, bucket brigade technology. Now today I'd like to show you some of these really awesome Strymon uh, modulation effects. They use a digital bucket brigade system in there. So they use DSP technology to recreate what was done in the analog world with bucket brigade circuitry. Um, all three of these that I'm showing you today, uh, the Strymon Ola, which is a D-bucket chorus and vibrato. Vibrato is a, a form of modulation also along with chorus, uh, the Zelza multi-dimensional phaser, which actually has two phasers in one. It has a four stage and a six stage. We'll get into that a little bit. And then the Orbit D-bucket flanger. Um, really, really, all three of these are audiophile quality. Uh, I would put them up against uh, most rack pieces that, that you may find in a studio. Uh, as far as cost, they're on the, the pro level as far as cost, uh, but we deserve nice things because we work real hard at this. So don't ever, uh, uh, don't ever be uh, shy or ashamed of, of having nice gear. You're working hard for it. Let's talk, uh, start off talking uh, about the flanger. Where have you heard flange before? Um, Anthony Jackson, uh, in the late 70s, uh, famously did a bass line, and I'll just play a little bit of it, and you'll instantly recognize it. I'm not going to name it so we don't get dinged here. So you get the idea. Um, flanger. It almost sounds to me like uh, the sound of an airplane flying in and out of your speaker. And what's happening is, is there are particular notched frequencies that are going through the frequency spectrum and are being accentuated. And you don't necessarily hear, uh, you don't hear that specific frequency, but you hear everything around it. So I'll play some long notes here and we'll mess with the, with the width and the speed uh, on this particular uh, pedal and see how it sounds. So you can kind of hear how it uh, uh, sounds quite swirly 
you can hear the the rise in in uh, higher frequencies coming out of the bass. You can hear uh, a rise in lower frequencies as it drops off and basically makes the sound undulate uh, back and forth, almost like uh, what happens when you drop a stone into water. And you can watch all the, the waves consistently roll off of that, that splash point. So uh, this one is, the orbit is super flexible. I have the feedback uh, set to positive. Uh, I have the LFO set to the through. Um, and it sounds amazing. Uh, let me take it to the log setting on the low frequency oscillator and the negative setting on the feedback. And you can hear a little bit about how the character of the tone changes a bit. Yeah, and we could let that go on forever, but it kind of gives you an idea about what the effect is doing. Now, I'm playing with a pick. Uh, it seems to me that modulation effects uh, really seem to come to life when you're playing with a pick. I know a lot of you guys have swore these things off, so I'll play a little bit with my fingers. Uh, this time, I'm going to set it on the positive-negative mode on the feedback and the linear setting on the LFO. I'm going to speed up things a little bit and I'm going to make it a little bit wider and I'll play with my fingers. That's great. As you can tell, there's a whole lot that can be done with just this flanger. Uh, th all of these, uh, the Orbit and the Ola, have a favorite setting. You can basically set up uh, your favorite flanger inside of here, save it to the favorite spot, then be able to mess with the pedal on the fly, on the bandstand, or in the practice room. Uh, and it effectively gives you two different sounds um, at your feet. So really, really awesome, awesome pedal. Let's take a look at the Zelza phaser. So this is either a four stage or six stage phaser. What you heard in the intro was the six stage phaser. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the four stage phaser right now. We have it on a, a classic sweep, which is a, a very classic phase, think phase 90. Uh, you've heard this uh, phaser on all kinds of guitar players. Eddie Van Halen was uh, famously used a, a phaser on a lot of stuff. Uh, one of my favorite uh, uses of phasing was on a Waylon Jennings song called Clyde, and it's all about uh, a man who plays electric bass. Um, I always like playing and singing that song for people. Uh, kind of gives a, gives the bass player a chance to stand out, but uh, Waylon played the uh, bass line on that, and it sounded great. I fell in love with the tone. This is pretty close to what what he had. <laughs> So nothing too crazy about that. Uh, you can hear uh, the way that the sound is rolling through a little bit. Um, I almost imagine like an EQ, uh, a graphic EQ and the sliders 
being automated and, and moving up in a wave and down in a wave uh, with this setting. Uh, this particular phaser also has what they call a barber sweep. So imagine a, a barber pole where one signal is constantly rotating up and pushing the other signal up. Uh, that's the idea with this. Yeah, that sounds great. Very, very usable. All right, let's go to the envelope setting. And this adds an envelope filter. We'll mess with the mix here in just a minute. All right, I'm going to put it back in classic mode, play a little bit with my fingers for you, and I'm going to spread out the signal, give us a little bit more depth. The great thing uh, about this pedal, you can see the, the speed flashing in time. So as I increase that speed, you can see exactly how fast that phase is going to be before you ever touch, touch a note. All right, that's the four stage phaser. All right, now we're gonna get into the uh, six stage phase. This has a resonance switch, uh, which it basically takes the, uh, the feedback frequencies from the output and places them back into the input. So it's basically recycling itself, which is kind of a strange concept, but uh, those crazy electrical engineers and sound engineers, they do their thing. I play one note at a time, so I don't, uh, I don't tend to, to dive too deep into that kind of thing. So here it is with the resonance off, uh, and we got the speed set about, about 12 o'clock and the depth set at about 2 o'clock. So as you can tell with the two extra stages in uh, um, phasing that uh, it really, really expands the sound. It makes it uh, a lot more, not necessarily artificial, but uh, you can definitely tell it's a lot more affected. So we're going to turn the resonance up to mild. And this is uh, when we get to, to use and listen to the, uh, the voice setting, so same speed, same depth.
kind of trippy. I like it. I like it. All right. I'm going to turn the voice back to 12 o'clock and turn the resonance on strong. say voice they really mean it it almost sounds like a, uh, a a talk box on there so let's roll it all the way forward <laughs> so much fun and here is the the great part about this particular pedal we can turn them up both on at the same time So great sounding pedal, has all the ins and outs. Uh, all of these pedals give you the ability to go in with a mono input and come out with a, a stereo output, which I would highly recommend you try sometime, especially if you're recording. Um, you really just add so much space and dim uh, dimension to, uh, to a track by doing that. Now, here is my favorite modulation uh, effect, the uh, chorus. I very seldom use it as a vibrato. Uh, doesn't really work for me and, and my style of bass playing and what I, what I want to do on a bandstand. But like I said, uh, I will engage a chorus if I'm playing in a three piece and uh, a member goes to, to take a solo and there is a loss of some frequency bandwidth up on the bandstand. I'll turn on my uh, chorus and just kind of expand the sound. Here is a basic setting of uh, what I like to use. I'll just play that without it. Probably notice a pretty big difference. Doesn't always work, especially on uh, on bandstands with lots of players. Uh, usually, the more the more instruments on stage, the less adornment I do to my sound. I want something that's going to cut. Uh, and sit right with a bunch of instruments, uh, but in the right setting, this is a great tone. Especially for uh, harmonics and the like. Really kind of make your harmonics uh, pop. So this was on the, uh, the chorus and in normal mode, there are three types here. There's regular chorus, uh, multi, and vibrato. Uh, we'll take a look at the modes. You have normal, envelope, and ramp. And let's take a, a listen to the envelope, and I'm gonna turn up the speed a little bit and turn the mix up a little bit.
So as you can tell, you can use the center knob as a sensitivity and we'll turn that way up and you can kind of hear how it does its thing. Turn that thing back. So, neat mode. Uh, the more you dig into it, the more it reacts to you. You play soft, it, it turns sweet. You play hard, it cleans up a little bit. Really nice function. The, the ramp controls the speed, and to do that, I can't, I can't really demonstrate this without kicking my leg up here and looking like a, a, a broken spatsy, so uh, we won't mess with that today. But you can basically uh, hold on to the button and turn on the chorus. Please, Larry. That's perfect. So you can hear when it ramps, you can set the ramp speed to either come in extremely fast or slowly. So you can kind of bring the chorus in and out very gently. Um, I can imagine this would sound great on a, a bowed upright bass using it like that. Um, really, really kind of neat, neat feature. Uh, also has the, the favorite switch so you can set up your favorite chorus, uh, multi or vibrato type uh, along with the regular modes and uh, get that set up and then be able to mess with it and have two different choruses in one box. So let's go to the multi-type uh, on normal mode and have a listen. I like that, um, and as far as the multi goes, I can see where uh, on a bass, again, with multiple instruments, with a couple guitars, uh, as much top end as it's introducing into your bass tone, uh, it may get washed out a little bit, but uh, you can adjust that through the mix and dial in more of your clean signal than affected signal. And let's turn it all the way up just cause Right, break out of your shell, bass players. Try this stuff out. It sounds good. You can make it sound even better. You just gotta put the time and effort in. You can find all of this stuff at moreguitars.com or you can give us a call anytime at More Music in Evansville, Indiana. Thanks, have a great day.